the purpose of Wealth Talk is to educate, inform, and hopefully entertain you on the subject of building your wealth. Wealth Builders recommends you should always take independent financial, tax, or legal advice before making any decisions around your finances. Welcome to episode 108 of Wealth Talk. My name is Christian Rodwell, the membership director for Wealth Builders. I'm joined today by our founder, Mr. Kevin Whelan. Hi, Kevin. Hi, Chris. Good to be with you again and absolutely brilliant to be showcasing one of our coaches. Indeed, we are. So today's guest is Bronwyn Vernkamp. And uh, we've known Bronwyn a long time, Kevin. Uh, she certainly knows the wealth builders process very well. And um, yeah, you're right. Bronwyn is one of our wealth coaches. And uh, inside our Wealth Builders Academy, we've got six wealth coaches, and all of our members have a coaching call every 30 days. Um, never let 30 days go by without taking some action. So that is one uh, area of accountability that we have for our members. And um, yeah, I, maybe it's good to know how you first connected with Bronwyn, Kevin. Yeah, well, Bronwyn connected uh, with me uh, when she was discovering that she wanted to get that leverage of her Lloyds Bank pension. I think she'll mention that in the interview, doesn't she? And uh, so, you know, she came to, she she was introduced to me by uh, Simon Zucci, who was a, um, a property coach. So again, the importance of coaching and the importance of connections. Um, so somebody connected us. We got on really, really well. Uh, we helped her go through a process of turning her old company pension, which is going to be kind of left until her retirement date, which she definitely did not want. Uh, she wanted to use that money to build her wealth today. And um, how powerful has it been that a combination of that money plus her own you know, skill and time has worked to the effect that she's financially completely free, as we'll discover, uh, way, way, way before the normal retirement date. So she's bought so much time back from her life. And you can probably tell when you listen to what Bronwyn's all about, you know, one of the great freedoms uh, which wealth is always built upon when it comes down to it, Chris. Everybody who wants to be wealthy wants to be wealthy for a reason. And that reason almost always boils down to one of the seven freedoms that we will often talk about and uh, and discuss inside the program. Yeah, that's right. Well, we're really focusing on step one of our recurring revenue roadmap today. And step one is all about the mindset. And as part of that module, it's really connecting with your reason why. And you rightly say, there's seven freedoms which we've identified. Uh, we know that these are almost always important to, to our members, and that's, of course, financial freedom, time freedom, freedom of location, which we're focusing on today, uh, relationship freedom, creativity, freedom of control, and freedom of purpose. Well, well, well remembered, Chris. I was wondering if I was going to have to step in and save <laughs> you there, but uh, no, not at all. You've, uh, you've nailed it, and uh, I think it's great to hear that you know, you're living and breathing it, and, and, and Bronwyn too. So just to continue that journey a little you know, uh, then once uh, Bronwyn had set up her, her SAS pension with a sizable pot of money, she engaged with me and her husband, John, uh, to mentor them to, you know, maximize the value of that and deploy that, which they did. And they worked with me in that with a, with a bunch of other people. And she went on to create her own property course, which we thought was great. And then um, she resonated so much with us and the relationship was so strong she decided that it wouldn't it be great to be giving back by helping other people to become financially independent and and now as a coach and and she does the coaching really not for profit it's uh, it's definitely not it's a purpose for her as it's giving back isn't it it's to say hey i was in a place where probably what i was going to get out of life trading time for money wasn't what i wanted i made some changes i followed a path i got some clear accountability uh, the plan was there. I was held accountable to the plan. And as a result, it's worked. And really, in essence, Chris, she's walked the entire walk of the nine-step roadmap. Well, we're talking about the roadmap and actually a good moment to remind you, if you're listening now and you haven't yet registered for the Academy launch webinar that Kevin and myself will be holding on Thursday, the 3rd of June, we'll be walking you through the entire roadmap so you can see exactly how we help our members to move from a place of financial insecurity through to security 
and then to independence. So if you'd like to join us for that, do head over to wealthbuilders.co.uk forward slash academy launch, all one word. And uh, yeah, reserve your place and join us on the 3rd of June. So um, shall we head on over and have a listen to our conversation with Bronwyn? Yeah, let's talk about that and um, just be mindful, I think, because uh, as you'll hear from her story, she's in a very unusual place. And when you're in unusual places, you sometimes get unusual noises. (laughs) Yes, the African winds blowing in the background. So, uh, okay, let's head on to our conversation with Bronwyn Vernecombe. Bronwyn, welcome back to Wealth Talk. Hi, Christian. How are you? Very, very good. Thank you. And um, for our listeners, if uh, you'd like to see the wonderful blue skies that Bronwyn has in the background today, which is really to the point of our conversation, then do head on over to uh, the Wealth Builders Facebook page or Facebook group, and you can see the video recording of this interview. But Bronwyn, good to have you back on. And uh, you've appeared before on Wealth Talk, of course. And uh, to be honest, it was uh, it's a continuation, really, of this freedom lifestyle that you've created for yourself, which is, you know, one of the freedoms, which is really important to a lot of people. But it'd be interesting today to really hear how you've managed to put this into practice for yourself and, and really how important this is for you. Mm, absolutely. Um, and it's great to be back on Wealth Talk. It's something that I love to listen to and I'm always learning. Um, so thanks for, for bringing me back on. And yes, I'm, I'm here in Namibia at the moment, but the, 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 the conversation today is going to be all about that, the freedom to be located anywhere in the world. And that's been very much our reason why we started in property about seven years ago. Um, was to be able to have choices and to spend our time doing things that we feel are really important to us. Um, property is, you know, is, is, is our route to freedom, but we very much like to spend time um, with, other, with other things in mind. And when we started out, it was really interesting because our coach at the time, it was very, very specifically said to us, what is your long-term goal? Where do you see yourself in 5, 10, 15, 20 years time even? Where, what would you be spending your time doing if you were not working in a corporate job? And that's a hard question for a lot of people because you know, normally we say, oh yes, more time with the family and that's taken for granted really. But for us, it was much more about um, you know, giving back, you know, working with organizations and charities and for, for me, it was wildlife. Uh, for John, it was sailing and, and doing more active stuff like that. Well, you know, over time, we've, we've done quite a lot of things, which uh, we can touch on in a minute. But um, yeah. yeah. So it'd be really good, I think, Bronwyn, just to, to, to recap on kind of where it all began, you know, because you were working in a, in a corporate career, you and your husband, John. And, um, you know, you very quickly transitioned um, from that corporate life where you were very much trading time for money every day, commuting to, you know, quickly being able to replace that income. And um, tell us a little bit about exactly how that transition occurred. Yes, absolutely. So, so yes, very much in the corporate rat race. I was working for Lloyds Bank. I'd been in banking for 21 years and, and I quite enjoyed my job, but the problem was <laughs> I couldn't take my pension until I was 67. I'd just been told that. Um, and in my mind, it was, well, I didn't really want to work beyond 55, which is what my father ha- had taken early retirement at that point. Um, my husband, John, was working in an IT consulting company in London. I was commuting sometimes to the Isle of Wight, sometimes to London, And the time we had for each other and for other things was very limited to not even evenings because long days, Um, you know, weekends, Saturdays pretty much was the only day we had. (laughs) Sundays you had to get ready for the next week. So, so, so huge, huge reason to find a way of creating an income that we could, we could get every month without needing to be, you know, commuting or even spending time at a desk and, we discovered property as as a way of getting rental income. Um, and yeah, within a couple of years of starting to learn, we, we were both um, out of our day jobs and working in the business, 
which uh, which was a different experience as well, was working with your spouse. <laughs> it's not easy. <laughs> but yeah. wow, you know, having choices now to do what we want to do, um, it's certainly been worth the effort in those first few years. That was back in yeah. 2014 when we started. Now, I think probably, Bronwyn, there's a lot of people listening who have managed to, you know, transition away from being an employee to becoming a business owner, property investor, but still trading time for money inside their own business, still feeling trapped by all the things they have to do every week and every month. So how did you set about actually systemizing the business so that you weren't, you know, stuck in the business yourself? Yes, the, um, it was really important to us when we started out that we didn't create another job. So when we started with sort of houses of multiple occupation or even single buy to lets, it was really important that whilst we found the property, we negotiated the price, we worked out the strategy, we managed the refurb, we certainly were never going to be managing the property and the tenants. So we started out with that in mind because we said, well, what happens if we want to go and, you know, John wanted to sail around the world (laughs) and if we wanted to go and spend some time in Australia, how would we make that work? So, So with that end in mind, it was a really good thing for us to think, right, whatever we do, it can't take up our time because our time needs to be finding the next deal, the next opportunity so that we can create enough income to give us that freedom so yeah we see it a lot people will take on jobs and maybe they enjoy doing it and that's fine but it's really hard then to step back and give it to someone else if you if you've been doing it yourself so I think with hindsight it's it it was it was really good to have that um that goal from the beginning and what what were some of the first tasks that you started to outsource well, first of all, it was the management of the properties. It was um, the refurbishment. Now, we had responsibility, but we weren't going to be painting the walls and sorting out where we were going to get the carpets. So, so networking early on so that we could find tradespeople or ideally somebody that could manage the whole project, really, um, and get it ready for letting um, yeah, I, I liked doing the negotiating. I liked finding the deals. And in fact, that's, that's the hardest bit, I think. Um, the rest can be done by other people. The hardest thing is finding the deal. Um, and, then, and then after that, we even, we even had other people help find a, us the deals as well because we knew how to do our due diligence and we, we found that you know, it was perhaps a little bit easier when we were doing bigger deals to work with some commercial agents and they would they would give us some opportunities some ideas some some deals that we would then go and assess so even that became something that, that other people could do um, but then the big catalyst was was then you know stopping at some point that was a big decision really is no more deals no more new deals because we had a we had a, a deadline for John doing the Clipper round the world yacht race, which had a, a start date um, and an end date. So that, that gave us real focus, real understanding, right? That's the time at which we will, um, you know, leave the UK and see how the business works without us. So, um, yeah. Yeah. So that was, that was, as you say, a real kind of milestone that you both had in your sights and you had to make sure that things were set up by that point. But of course, until you actually, you know, begin that epic journey and, uh, you know, I can't wait to hear all about that. But, um, you know, there must have been some teething problems along the way. And, um, you know, how, how did you find it when you were completely in other countries and you were spending lots of time traveling around um, was that kind of nerve wracking at any point? How's the business going to manage without us? Oh, yes, definitely. You know, we, we had to get our house ready to rent out as well before we left. And we didn't, you know, we were on this sort of um, this real focus of, right, we've got to do this by then. John was doing his training. So he was off for several weeks at a time training to to sail the, these these this round the world yacht. So, um 
you know, we had a lot to do. We had at that point when we left in 2017, we had four businesses, um, three of them property related and then my education business. And in fact, I set that up with going around the world in mind because it was something that I love doing is helping other people learn. And I'd done quite a lot of that the previous couple of years with Simon Zucci. So I'd been hosting the PIN meetings and I'd been teaching mastermind groups locally for, for Simon. So yeah, we had four businesses to sort of go, well, okay, are they ready for us to go? Or do we take them with us? You know, this, the, the technology is fantastic. So if I take my laptop with me, it doesn't matter where I am. I can still coach people. I can still have these meetings and still Zoom chat with people. Um, it, it just felt a bit like, is it going to work? We didn't really know. Um, and so we just, I set my sights on the first three months. So with John, John left the UK in July um, 2017. I then left in the September to go and meet him in Uruguay. And it wasn't until I was in Uruguay that I actually did a Facebook Live, and I still have it on Facebook. It's very precious to me. I did a Facebook Live and said, I'm here in Uruguay. I've been here two weeks. I'm not coming home. I mean, I told my kids and stuff, but I didn't actually admit to, to anyone else that I was going to keep going on this journey um, because I wasn't sure it would work. <laughs> but by committing, again, another thing like that, committing and saying it to friends and family in the public just made me think okay this is this is going to work the confidence you know the ability to say well we've we've done everything we need to do we've got really good people on the ground in the UK um you know the, the finances were working the systems well some worked well some didn't work so well and some we didn't have at all <laughs> so it was a bit of a test and I always knew I could, I could hop on a plane and go home if I needed to. I had that flexibility. John didn't, not if he wanted to complete his round the world challenge. Um, he was coming into various ports across the world. So every, you know, between three and six weeks, you know, he'd be finishing a leg wherever in the world and <clears throat> we would get back together and I would have a list of things he needed to do <laughs> for the business. Um, once he'd recovered and then before he went off on the next leg. But I knew I could always fly home. The worst comes to the worst, you know, can always just hop on a plane and come back. But by setting that goal in Uruguay, it was just another business goal. It was something that, you know, I can make this work. I'm going to say to everybody, look, I'm going to go around the world as well. Um, follow me, come with me. You know, I've had a lot of followers on my journey. Yeah. It was it was brilliant. It really was brilliant to uh, to watch that. And uh, I think what you mentioned there about the accountability, make yourself accountable, state publicly. You know uh, that's really important. Certainly, I've used that to good effect as well in the past. And um, I'd love to know, Bronwyn. You know what was the routine that you kind of did your best to get into uh, when you were away to you know just to keep on top of things? Was it like a early morning routine? Were you checking stuff throughout the day? And you know just how how much time did it actually consume? Yeah, I had to be super organized for the round the world because obviously I was going to be in different places and I had to be, um, I had to plan quite a lot of things. But I, I, I was quite good at getting someone to help me doing that. So I like working with other people. And I had someone do all my flights around the world. Um, that, there were two reasons for that. A, I used, used an expert who could find me the best flights um, between places but also if there was a problem I could go to her and say Trish can you sort this out um, so it gave me the comfort to know that I had that sorted um, I think from a work point of view it was um, setting aside certain days of the week to just focus on work um, be it emails or um, the different four businesses that, that I said we had I did I did do a new deal I didn't tell John but just before we left um, just before I left the UK um, I'd met with an owner of a bed and breakfast and started to talk to him about renting 
uh, leasing his empty bed and breakfast. I didn't tell John because he would be really cross with me, but I knew it was going to work well. <laughs> it wasn't new. It wasn't a new thing. We'd done it before and I just couldn't say no to it. So I was negotiating that um, when I left and then carried on doing that. So, you know, I would have, I would be there on video uh, with my um, guest house manager and the owner Um, I met him face to face before I left, but then we carried on talking. He didn't know where I was. He didn't know I was going away for a period of time. I didn't, he didn't need to know that, just needed to know and trust me. Um, So a lot of people didn't know that I was away um, and didn't, you know, the time difference, obviously I had to be careful with and manage that, but I set aside certain days. That was how I did it. And then I used Calendly as a as a tool for managing my diary. So if somebody needed to talk to me, I could send them the link and that would automatically in my phone, I could set the time so that it worked from a time zone point of view. And that was, that was a godsend really. I don't, I didn't really make many mistakes, but I did have to speak to a mortgage company while I was in New Zealand at about 11 o'clock at night uh, when the internet was poor. So that was a big, <laughs> that was very uncomfortable <laughs> as I needed to sort something urgently. That was one issue that, that wasn't great. I remember it very well. Yeah. And obviously the use of technology is something that I'm sure aided you whilst you've been away. You mentioned Calendly there, which is obviously a way for, for people to book in calls with you. Um, what what other systems and technology have you used, Bronwyn, that might be helpful for other people in a similar situation? Yeah, we use now, we use um, Asana as a team tool. Um, after the first, after the year around the world, we came back and took stock. You know, there were things that were in control brilliantly and there were other things that were not. And the email uh, trail, and if we weren't around for a while, the email volume was huge. And what we found was using a tool like Asana meant that we could alloc- allocate tasks to people, but also rather than losing emails you know, on a tr- you know, emails in, in the email system, you can actually have tasks where you can look and see people's comments within the team. So you're much more in control. Um, so Asana has been, is vital to us, absolutely vital. Um, LastPass for passwords. <laughs> Because as you know, you know, when you go to different countries, um, some things work and some things don't, or um, because you're using a different Wi-Fi system, you know, sometimes things go a little bit awry. And knowing that all our passwords and everything is accessible by us and by people that we want to use those things also meant that from a security point of view, we were comfortable um, those are the two key ones, Calendly I've talked about. Um, and yeah, my, my MacBook Pro really, <laughs> I can't, um, you know, using really good equipment um, with great memory, you know, the highest memory storage, Dropbox. Dropbox is the other one. Um, Dropbox essential for storage, secure storage of, um, of information and um, Google Drive as well. So we, when we create stuff, it's in, again, it's, it's easy to access. So, um, yeah, but the first year, as I said, this is how we learned. You know, we realized what worked well and what didn't work so well. Um, after that, round the world, we had a few months at home and then we went to Australia. And that's where I wrote my book. But in Australia, the good thing we did there was that we didn't even rent an Airbnb or an apartment. We actually house sat for somebody. So there's another idea for people that you don't, you know, we saved money by renting our home out, um, either on a short term or long term basis. And then if we can house sit, look after someone else's house for a period of time, you know, at least a month. And we had we had somewhere it was three months um, watering a lady's garden in Queensland. And it didn't cost us anything, um, nor did the Wi-Fi. So so that gave us stability and also meant it cut our costs quite, quite significantly too. So um, there are different ways you can live remotely um, and still continue um, your business. And if you can make use of your own, as- your own home as an asset, 
um, that's also very useful, takes the pressure off. Yeah, so so a good example there of of leverage and and um, you know touching on one one of the seven pillars with with home capacity there. Now, obviously, in your role as a, as one of our wealth coaches, Bronwyn, you're um, you know you're coaching our clients and our members, um, you know, whilst you're away enjoying the freedom of location. And um, you know, what are some of the strategies that you yourself have now um, expanded into and, and different use of pillars since you first started? Mm. Yes, I, I'm, I love helping other people learn and um, it's been great to be a coach for, for, for wealth builders. Um, and the, the good thing there, again, is, is I have a calendar. So I will block off my calendar and make sure that I'm available. Um, we've been volunteering out here with wildlife conservation. So I've had to be careful because quite often I'm in remote places with no internet at all. So, But on the whole, it's worked pretty well. Um, because I can schedule that. Um, uh, so that's been great. Uh, in terms of other pillars, well, there's my book. Um, I do have a copy here, uh, Building Your Dream Life, which I wrote while I was in Australia. Um, again, that's for me, that was quite hard. It was a hard thing to do. I had to have discipline to sit down and do that. Um, again, I used experts. It's something's a bit of a theme here, but I worked with a book coach um, just to give me that drumbeat and that focus. Very, very important. Um, managed to do that while I was in Australia. And um, yeah, by, by sharing and inspiring people with my story, that book, um, you know, I was able to, to share all the top tips, all the things that I've done, all my case studies and examples, so that um, people can see that it's not rocket science. It isn't difficult. And if, if somebody like myself can, can put something in writing like that, then anyone can do it. To be, to be honest. So trying to inspire people and, and help other people. And of course, I've got my own um, online um, property training course that I set up um, in 2017. Um, and with that in mind, that's video based. So it's very visual, something that I think was quite unique at the time. Um, but I've still got that and I coach people through that as well. Um, because that's all online, it was pretty easy. Um, and, and coaching on Zoom. So that's the other technology that was pretty new in 2017 to me. I think it was your idea, actually, Christian, um, for me to use that, that. And it's been fantastic. I just wish I'd bought shares in it back in 2017. So, so coaching and mentoring people, um, you know, doing podcasts and things like that. I love doing that. Um, and, yeah, the different elements of... Um, of the pillars like pension. So SAS for me, I set up in 2016, or maybe it was yeah, 2016. Um, and, you know, being able to then use that in my business and to help other people as well. Fantastic. because so I can lend to other people doing property and I can also uh, borrow my own pension funds for various deals that we were doing. And as I said, you know, working remotely, you might think, oh, well, she can't do any more property deals. So she's finished her property journey. Well, that's that's not the case at all. So I, I talked about the purchase lease option I did while I was in uh, uh, going around the world. We secured that before I, well, about around about the end of the year in 2017. And we actually signed the documentation in the April, but we had ability to use that property. So I got that off the ground, got that working and then while we were in Australia, we bought a very large commercial property in Adelston in Surrey, near London. And that was, um, that was to get permitted development. And we raised £300,000 uh, within a week um, from investors, SaaS investors and other investors, to be able to exchange on that property. And we did that whilst we were in Darwin in Australia. So again, you know, encouraging people to say, well, yes, you can you can work and you can run a business wherever you are. Um, and we always know that we can, we can hop on a plane and come home if we need to. But actually, the fun that we have along the way just keeps us going. Um, well, just, just before we, we round off, Bronwyn, tell our listeners a little bit about some of the experiences or the highlights from your, your current trip that uh, obviously you've, you've been 
very lucky to witness. Well, yes, I mean, uh, we always planned to travel again. So after Australia in 2019, 2020, we were going to go back to Australia in the April. And of course, we know what happened <laughs> around about then in 2020. So we, um, you know, we were very keen to, to, to get back traveling again after lockdown one. Um, and Namibia was definitely on the cards for around about October time anyway. So as soon as the borders opened here in Africa, in Namibia, um, we hopped on a plane before the second lockdown. So we were very lucky, didn't expect another lockdown, of course. But um, I'd all, I've always loved wildlife ever since I was a child as part of the World Wildlife Fund and doing holidays when I was little. Um, and so I, I sort of found this organisation called Nankuse um, quite a number of years ago, well, maybe even 10 years ago now. And whilst John was sailing around the world, I actually did two weeks at the organisation in Namibia just to test it out and see what it does. Um, and I loved it, absolutely loved it. And two weeks was, wasn't enough. And, and John was really keen to, to do it as well. So we said, why don't we go back to Nankuse and volunteer there? Because of COVID, they were having very few volunteers from across the world. I think when we arrived, there were five. Normally, they have maybe 30, 40. And they really need that to help do what they do, which is which is wildlife conservation. So we, so we were one of uh, five volunteers um, on a farm, on a reserve, uh, near the centre of Namibia, very few people around. And we were doing things like um, helping, helping dart rhinos on the reserve and ear notching and monitoring their health, um, which was tremendous. Um, that was a big highlight um, to to walking cheetah out in the reserves. These are cheetah that are in ca in captivity and they need that stimulation to actually go go walking. And they you know they would go off and hunt, <laughs> and we'd be walking and following them um, right through to chopping um, vegetables for the baboons. You know, pretty basic stuff. Um, gutting chickens you know <laughs> to feed to the carnivores um but you know they really needed our help and the great thing about about doing the stuff that we've been doing is that it, it's been a a big wish of ours to give back to charities so we pay to do the volunteering we we give our time and we give our muscles <laughs> and brain power to helping um and even now you know john's working on a spreadsheet to help the lifeline clinic um monitor what they do with um with young people in um in the community in terms of their um the medical care so that we we've got skills and abilities to help other people and it, it's really rewarding not only did we escape lockdown but we've been in a, such a beautiful country um, we finished volunteering now after five months and we were exploring uh, ourselves now finding out a bit more about the country and, you know, finding um, beautiful places to, to explore. So it's, it's, just, it's just lovely. Um, and I feel very blessed that we've had the chance to escape, really, uh, and have, the I suppose, the guts to just do it because we've done it before. So we didn't have that fear, I think. Um, and, yeah, we didn't expect to be out here for seven months. Um, there just wasn't any point in coming home. Um, during lockdowns or quarantine um, and it's our intention to carry on um, traveling whilst whilst we've now got our car out here so yes lots of exciting times good well it's been so good to hear from you Bronwyn as to how you've actually managed to make this a reality it's something I know that is a dream for so many people you've brought it to life and proof that it's absolutely possible to leverage systems, to leverage people in a, in a good, positive way um, so that you can do more of what you love. And ultimately, that's the reason I'm sure everyone is building wealth. It's not because they want the money. It's because they want the lifestyle that that can bring. And um, for anyone who is in the Wealth Builders community, obviously, Bronwyn, they're, they're already connected. They can reach you through our private Facebook group. For anyone who's not within our members community already where's the best place for them to go online and kind of find out more about what you do 
Yeah, they, um, you can find me on social media. I mean, LinkedIn and Facebook, I'm very active in. Um, I'm sure you can place, there's a, <clears throat> a link that you've got that you can put in the show notes um, of, you know, if you want to have a chat with me, um, I've got a diary system. You can book half an hour for free um, and talk to me about how I can help you with your property journey and maybe your mindset as well. Because I think the, the one key thing I want to say to people now is don't wait you know, if you've got the freedom and yes, my kids are older. So, um, and you know, I don't have any parents now, so they, they've both died. So I suppose from that point of view, it's been easier, but, but don't keep putting it off and go, well, maybe next year, maybe next year, just, just have a go, come and talk to me, start thinking and planning something that's real to you and your family um, as I said, right from day one, John and I were asked by our coach to really think about what we would want to be doing with our time. And from that day on, I've even got the background to my phone is Nankuse. I did that in 2014 when I started learning. That's where I'm going to go. That's where I'm going to spend time and not just a week. You know, it's going to be months and that's what I'm doing. So, so start getting that in your head and don't put it off. Bronwyn, thanks so much for sharing with us today. Pleasure. Thanks for having me. Okay, that was really enjoyable catching up with Bronwyn there. And uh, I would encourage anyone to check out the video interview so you can see Bronwyn in uh, the glory of the African background that she has there. And um, what were some of the key lessons that you pulled out there, Kevin? Well, I think she picked out that particular place and that particular uh, focus, hadn't she, for years and years and years. I mean, that had been a key word that she'd had in her life that she always wanted to go and get involved in wildlife conservation and uh, wanted to go back and, and revisit that place and, and now we've done so. And I think it's a – I checked out the website. It's very, very inspiring, actually. Definitely go and check out, uh, check it out yourself and just see what uh, that inspires in you. It's not necessarily something I would do, but but I can see why – you know, that is a, a big part of her inspiration. And, and isn't that great when you can be spending your time? She can, she knows she's got a solid property business. She knows that she can give back through the coaching. She knows that she's got a great network. She's got her own coaches and mentors and she's got her own team. It's just great to see all of the parts of the leverage coming together in an elegant solution that's working so well for her. Yeah. Well, Bronwyn loves helping others. We know that as uh, in her role as one of our wealth coaches. So uh, before we dive into some of the wealth lessons there from uh, from that conversation, let's head to Trustpilot and uh, focus on some of our clients and members who've left us a review over the last seven days. So uh, first up is Steve. Uh, so welcome to the program, Steve. I know Steve has just joined this week and uh, he's saying, uh, hi, Kevin. Just a quick note to thank you for mentioning Building a Story Brand by Donald Miller. It's amazingly powerful and has highlighted how much I'm currently focusing on me rather than my customers. I'll be making a big changes soon. Thanks again. Yeah, great comments from Steve and so glad he's joined the program. But uh, he's into property and we were chatting about how to get further leverage of funding in property. And usually... As I see all over the place, you know, people who like property, it's expensive commodity. They run out of money way, way, way before they run out of ambition and they need a plan to attract funding. And um, most developers speak the language of the deal and the language of themselves. So and we try and help them craft a story because investors and, and, and individuals generally buy into stories. You know, they buy into the concept of getting great relationships, you know, building uh, building things with impact and, 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 and feeling connected, which is what essentially wealth building is all about in our view, isn't it? So for that collaboration. So I think he's ready to make some great changes. And I think based on that was one of the reasons he decided to join the program because we kind of turned his mind almost 180 degrees on itself. And he thought, wow, if I can get that just from one fun conversation, what can I get if I work with these guys? So, so pleased to have him along. Yeah. And uh, he's joined with his wife as well. So looking forward to working with you both. And um, another review as well, I'll pull out from Nigel. And uh, Nigel said, deciding on choosing a SAS pension as an option shouldn't be taken lightly. And wealth builders have provided incredible support and guidance during the process 
before and during my application, playing a huge part in the success of my SAS being approved by HMRC. And the ongoing training and support has been incredibly helpful, and I couldn't recommend Wealth Builders enough. They also provide a strong network of like-minded people that has huge value, thanks to the team. There you go. You know, hopefully, again, just endorsing that it's, you know, wealth should not be a DIY activity. You know, it's meant to be an enjoyable process. It can be isolated out there when you're bombarded with information left, right, and center. Uh, having a, a great filter, having a great community around you, I think it's just a better way to build wealth, Chris, which is why we love doing it. So focusing on Bronwyn and her, you know, her lifestyle that she's created and how she's been able to do that because, you know, we know so many people want freedom of time to be able to just do the things they want and, and travel is, is certainly up there with, with many people's, uh, you know, priorities. So, um, you know, you can't really achieve that without the use of leverage. And we know that leverage sits right at the heart of the wealth building process. It's step five in the recurring revenue roadmap. And Bronwyn talked about, you know, a couple of different types of leverage there, um, you know, relationship leverage, where she talked about having her travel agent, the, the woman who's, you know, just making sure that all of those plans are in place. Um, so that's a good use of relationship leverage. And then system leverage, she talked about the technology using things like Calendly and Asana and Dropbox and LastPass. So, you know, making sure that her business can run efficiently from anywhere in the world. Yeah. And, and I think what's I like most about Bronwyn is how humble she is. You know, she acknowledges there were some challenges and some problems. It's interesting. She talked about try, doing deals with John, didn't even know uh, that, you know, that's just interesting, really, isn't it? To see that she kind of knew she could, wanted to do it and wanted to test herself. And of course, John uh, wanted to go along with it in the end. Of course he would. But it's you know, just, it's fascinating to see how people do that and just love that house sitting idea. I mean, crumbs, you rent out your own home and create leverage from your home capacity. And then you go and spend three months in somebody else's home for free. I mean, that's smart, isn't it? Yeah. Well, these, these are all the tricks and the strategies that, you know, when you have a, a wealth coach, you, uh, you can tap into this experience and knowledge. And, and Bronwyn has heaps of that. Yeah. Yeah. Trusted House Sitter, I think, is the uh, organization she used on that. So, you know, check that out. Yeah, and I think as well, she was house sitting. Um, she was in the Wit Sundays in Australia. I remember having some Zoom calls, and uh, oh, it was it looked absolutely gorgeous there. And uh, and that's where she took some time out to write her book. And um, she talked again about you know leveraging a book coach. You know, so always learning, always having someone to support her and provide that accountability. And uh, that was an Amazon bestseller. I think she's got over a hundred five star reviews on Amazon now. So um, that was that was great. Mm, absolutely. Well, look, I think what's obvious to me is you know, Bronwyn is is following the process, isn't she? She's building not just a little black book, but a quite a sizable black book of people that she trusts. And you can't do that in a moment. You've got to put time into it. This is the big dilemma, Chris, that the, probably of all the freedoms, and you eloquently mentioned all seven, but of all of them, the one that is the most popular, the one that resonates most clearly and strongly with most people is the freedom of time. So the time to do what they want, to be where they want, with who they want, yet the amount of time people are willing to give to create a life that's possible is so little. Constantly trading time for money, constantly battling uh, self-employment, which is trading time for money often in businesses which the illusion is the business is making them free, but in fact the business is trapping them because they're spending more time in more jobs than they had before. And uh, as they'll begin to realize, they can't be masters of all of them because when they had a job, they had infrastructure with people who were trained in certain areas, and now they've got to wear all the hats under the sun. And that causes problems. So I just want to encourage people to, to find that two hours a week that's all it takes to start. And you just have to start. You don't have to be perfect. And you can tell Bronwyn was not perfect. You know, she came back, made changes, came back, made changes, constantly evaluating and making changes. So get started. Find two hours a week. That's enough to get going. And within five years, you'd be completely financially free for most people. Isn't it worth paying the price to do that and then to be 
living a life, whatever your version of Bronwyn's life is, uh, on your own terms um, for the rest of your life? I don't know. I think it is, Chris, and it, I, you know, I'm constantly perplexed as the the traps that people kind of fall into, um, thinking, oh, it's, I don't have the time. Well, yeah, okay. Then you're going to be trapped forever, uh, trading time for money and working till you die, and it's just not a great place. Um, so anyway, I'm off my soapbox about that. <laughs> Well, we know one of our core values at Wealth Builders is is the fact we're holistic, and um, the seven pillars of wealth are, you know, the 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 key really to diversifying, so that you're never reliant on one source of income. And for most people, we know ninety five percent of the population they're relying on that one source either from a job or their business. Um, so the key is to really look at multiple pillars, multiple streams of income. And whilst we didn't specifically go through those with Bronwyn, we know her well enough. Um, to know that she's got multiple pillars working and we talked about home capacity. She talked about joint venturing, lending her SaaS uh, money to to other investors. So you can see there when you really do focus on building wealth across multiple pillars, it gives you that freedom. It does. And it, it makes you, you know, financially bulletproof. Uh, not that you should worry about trying to build wealth on seven pillars in one go. That's not what you do. You start somewhere, and as Bronwyn did, she started with property. Then from property, she went to pension. Then from pension, she went, you know, to IP. And then from IP, she's gone to joint ventures and collaboration. So it's a process of working out with your coach what's the right thing for you to get started. Otherwise, if you give people the idea, Chris, that they need to build wealth in multiple things and they think they've got to build wealth in all seven assets, they'll shut down in overwhelm and the thermostat will click out before they even start. So we just want people to start with one thing and that could be any one thing, even if it's just investing a few hundred pounds or a few hundred dollars into some form of investment, you know, to get them going so that they've started to make some progress. The journey has begun. Well, if you are looking to begin your journey, then we'd love to remind you to uh, come and join us on the 3rd of June, where we'll be showing you inside the brand new Wealth Builders Academy, which we're launching in June. So do register at wealthbuilders.co.uk forward slash academy launch. And um, I think that pretty much wraps up today's episode, Kevin. Yeah, looking forward to that. And maybe, Chris, we should highlight some of our other coaches and their unique pathway because everybody chooses a slightly different path with a slightly different story, but all roads end in financial independence. Yeah, we definitely will do that. So uh, thank you for listening today. Hope you enjoyed it. Kevin, we'll catch up same time, same place next week. Mm -hmm. And until next time, my friend, see ya. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. Don't forget that we are constantly updating our resources inside the Wealth Builders membership site to help you create, build, and protect your wealth. Head over to wealthbuilders.co.uk slash membership right now for free access. That's wealthbuilders.co.uk slash membership. <laughs>